Hi, we're going to do a monster practice on acid-base titration, and we're looking at the equivalence point. Uh, this has be, uh, become known as number 23. It's from our textbook, um, and if you're not in my class, but you want a really good review on acid-base titration at equivalence point, this is going to take some muscle. It'll be a good review for you. So here's the question. We have phenol, it's C6H5OH, and we've got 0.515 uh, grams dissolved in 125 mils of water. I wanna give you a visual. So imagine that I measure out 0.515 grams of phenol. I put it in my little Erlenmeyer flask. I bring it to volume at the 125, swirl, 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 swirl. Um, this is dissolved. There's the analyte. And then I'm going to have up here my burette and it is going to deliver sodium hydroxide, a strong base. So I'll have a weak acid for my analyte and the strong base is going to be my titrant. Um, we are going to use a 0.123 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, great. Um, so I know the moles that I have in here, I have the volume um, and I know the molarity of the titrant and we want to reach equivalence point. We would use an indicator on this and when the indicator changed color, that's when I know to stop the burette from giving the sodium hydroxide and I'd read the volume. I'd read the volume of that and I'd know that the moles inside the Erlenmeyer flask would equal the moles of the base in the uh, burette. So here are the questions that were asked. First, what was the original pH? AP likes to do this. They'll ask for original pH and then they'll ask for the equivalence pH. So what's the final pH? Let me put here at the equivalence point. Now I've added, um, or actually textbook has added another question, but it's really, really good because it makes you think, <laughs> good to think. Um, it wants to know what are all of the uh, concentrations of every ion at the, at the equilibrium point. Okay, so let's start with this one. This is actually super easy. This is just a basic, hey, let's do um, an ice table, original pH. Now, let me draw a little table to remind you what's happening, where we're at. Uh, we're going to have this weak acid. We're going to titrate it with the strong base, the sodium hydroxide, here's pH. We're going to be at some low pH. This is what I want to know right here. That's part A. They're saying, hey, before you add a drop of sodium hydroxide, what's the pH? And then what we're looking for is the pH right here at the equivalence point. And remember the important thing on this is where the moles of the acid, the hydrogen, equal the moles of the base, the hydroxide. So these are the two points that we're focusing on. What's the initial concentration? What's um, my equivalence point. So initial, remember, I haven't added any hydroxide. I only have the phenol floating in water. So let's write that equation. We are going to have phenol that partially reacts with water because it is a weak acid. So we're going to have, oops, sorry, uh, C6H5OH plus water is going to be in equilibrium because it's partially reacts. It's going to go into equilibrium, equal rates. Uh, our phenol uh, conjugate base, I'm going to lose that hydrogen plus the hydronium. So let's do ICE for our ice table, our initial concentration. Oh, they didn't give that to us. Um, but they did give us volume and they did give us the grams. Let's take some time and figure this out. So we have got 0.515 grams. Remember on ice tables, that has to be molarity, which is moles per liter. So I've got to find moles. We've got grams of this phenol, C6H5OH. The molar mass for phenol is uh, 94.12 grams for every one mole. And so that is going to give us 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles. So there's the moles. To find molarity is moles per liter. Well, they gave us 125 mils. Divide that by 1,000 will be 0 0.125 liters. And that concentration will be 4.377 times 10 to the minus two big M molar. So let's put that here. That's our initial concentration. Before I add a drop of base, this is what I begin with right there. 
Um, so we're going to have 4.377 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Okay, nice. <laughs> One step of many finished. Now water is a liquid, so I put a dash here because we don't use liquids in equilibrium. We have zero of this conjugate phase because we this is going to be in pure water and we have zero of the hydronium. Now the phenol react with the water, so we're going to lose an amount of the phenol and gain an amount of this um, anion and an amount of the hydronium. E, love this. All we have to do is add I plus C. We get 4.377 times 10 to the minus 2. And here we have, um, oh, sorry, sorry, minus X plus X plus X. Zero plus X is X. Zero plus X is X. Notice I put up here that the Ka value for phenol is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10. So off to the side, I'm going to go ahead and write our equilibrium expression. Ka will equal our conjugate base times the hydronium ion divided by this weak acid. The C, it's C6H5OH. So now we can just plug in everything we have. The Ka value is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10 equals, um, oh, sorry, will be x times x right here, x and x divided by, here is my acid, and that was the 4.377 times 10 to the minus 2 minus x. Now, remember, if there's a factor of 100 difference, between the Ka and the concentration, x is negligible. Well, I have eight zeros difference, minus two, minus 10. That x is going to be so small that when I subtract it from the concentration, it's as if the concentration doesn't even change. This is really reactant favored. It's barely going to react. Majority of the concentration will be on the reactant side. Um, so we can go ahead and do the math. It'll be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10. Um, equals x squared divided by 4.377 times 10 to the minus 2. So let's multiply both sides um, by this uh, 4.377 times 10 to the minus 2. So when I multiply that, that will cancel out. And then to get x, I have to take the square root of both sides. So x will equal Let's see, 2.385 times 10 to the minus 6. Now, it wanted pH. What's the initial pH? You'll recall that just pH equals negative log of hydronium or hydrogen. They're the same thing for chemists. X is hydronium. All I have to do is the negative log of 2.385 times 10 to the minus 6. And that will give us a pH equals 5.6. So there's our answer right here. It equals 5.6. We've got part A done, the first part done. Okay, good. So that is really a basic ice table. Really good review. Uh, when you see that on a test, you'll be like, oh, good. I can do that. Uh, that's the, the easy part. Now we're going to do the equivalence point. So at the equivalence point, um, we know one really important fact. The moles of the hydrogen equal the moles of the hydroxide. So the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. Well, guess what? We know the moles of the acid. Right here, they told us 0.515 grams. And we already did that math. We used the molar mass and converted it to grams. You'll recall this. When we did the 0.515 grams and the molar mass was um, 94.12 grams in one mole. Uh, let me give you that number again. It was... 5.47 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. That right there. That's the moles of the acid inside of this. Now remember, when we're doing um, this point, it's moles. It's not molarity. So I don't care about the 125 mils. I could have any volume in here of water. It doesn't matter. I still have the same number of moles that came from the 0.515 grams. And again, beautiful thing. At the equivalence point, moles of acid equals moles of base. So we're going to have initial and final. 
for my initial, so at the equivalence point, okay, at the equivalence point, we will have 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles of the acid. And by definition, I will have the same number of moles, 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles. That's at the equivalence point, what we'll say we have initially, because I live right here. That's what I'm focusing on. Those moles are the same. We'll have zero and zero. Now this reaction happens. It's a one to one molar ratio. So if I have the same moles, those are consumed. Perfect consumed because we're at the equivalence point. What's produced is going to be, oh, and you know what? I wrote this wrong, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. That was water. Got ahead of myself. I was thinking to our next step. Um, so sorry, that was water. So this, you notice hydrogen plus OH produces H2O, not H3O plus. Um, okay, so these react perfectly and produce 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles. And why is that? It's because it's a one to one to one to one mole ratio. If one mole of hydroxide reacts, it produces one mole of phenol. Well, 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles reacted, so it produced 5.47 times 10 to the minus three. Um, now remember on water, it's a liquid. It's not a part of the equilibrium expression. So that is a dash. Okay, so now think back physically to what's happening. I dissolve my 0.515 grams into this 125 mils of water. Here it is. And then I have my burette and it adds um, sodium hydroxide, exactly 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles into this, boom. It changed color, we're at the equivalence point. So at this moment, inside of here, I only have the phenol anion, this 5.47 times 10 to the minus three of that conjugate base. So it's floating in the water. Now, remember, when we're at equivalence point, the way to solve for pH is the three steps. And if you need to go back and look at um, that video under acid base playlist, look at the three steps. It's solving for pH at the equivalence point. Um, so our three steps, little reminder. Number one, you have to do initial and final moles. Number two, take care of the dilution. And number three, you do a new ice table. Well, we've already done step one. We did initial final moles. By definition at the equivalence point, the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. So now we have to take care of the dilution. So dilution meaning all I have in here is this ion, okay? That conjugate base is floating in here. And I need molarity in order to do the new, nice, the new ice table, but I only have moles. So I need to divide that by liters. Well, I started with 125 mils in here, but then I added some base to it. And right now I don't know how much base I added to it. So we got to figure out how much base, what's the volume of the base we added, and then add those two together, and that's the total new volume. Then we can figure out the molarity for this right here. Um, so I've got to find out how many mils were added to my Erlenmeyer flask when we delivered the 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles. I can do that because we were given molarity. So let's calculate that. Okay, so we are going to deliver this 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles of the hydroxide. Well, the molarity of my sodium hydroxide, and remember this is a one-to-one, -one. molarity of sodium hydroxide is 0.123, which means the molarity of just the hydroxide is 0.123 um, because of that one-to-one -one ratio. Let's use that. I have 0.123 moles of hydroxide for every one liter for every one liter. Um, let's go ahead and do that math. And we come up with, this is going to equal 4.447 times 10 to the minus two liters. Now, if I were to um, divide that by a thousand, just so you can see it, it'd be 44.47 mils. Wow. So I had 125 mils here, and in order to add exactly the 5.47 times 10 to the minus three moles of this 0.123 molar, I had to go drip, 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 add 44.47 mils. Um, 
Now remember, I began with 125, 125 mils of my acid. I added 44.47 mils of the base. So that means my new concentration is, let's see here. Actually, we need our new volume. Let's just add that up really quick would be 169.47 mils, which would be 0.16947 liters. So now we can do that concentration. What's the concentration of this? Let's take our moles divided by the liters. And the liters are 0.16947 liters. Let me see where I had done that work. Here it is. It is 3.227 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. And that is going to be, oh, so sorry, not for my, it was from the hydroxide, sorry, that we did right here. So I had to find the mils of the hydroxide. This right here is actually the moles of my conjugate base. So sorry about that. And let me tell you why. So I'll review really quick. I had 125 mils of acid in here. Right here, we figured out the volume that we added of the burette, the sodium hydroxide was 44 mils. So I added that. That gave us now, I have 169 mils down here, almost floating in it. Well, at the equivalence point, those are completely reacted. The only thing floating in there is that conjugate base, this C6H5O minus. So I need to find the molarity of that conjugate base in here. So here's the moles of that conjugate base divided by that new total volume, 169.169. So this is now the molarity of that conjugate base, C6H5O minus. Okay, so that's step two. That takes care of the dilution. It's when you add the titrant to the analyte, that base to the acid, what's the new volume? I simply take what's left over, this conjugate base divided by the volume. Okay, last step, we're almost there. You guys are doing so, 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 so good. Uh, let's do our ice table, step three. So this has a weak base inside of it. It's this one right here, it has that weak base in it. So it's going to partially react with water. That's going to determine the pH. So we have to write a new reaction with this, that base, weak base, reacting with water. So let's write our new reaction. We're going to have C6H5O minus plus, it will react with water, and it will be in equilibrium. It only partially reacts because it's weak. Um, so here the hydrogen is going to donate the hydrogen, or the water is going to donate the hydrogen. So we get our phenol again. Um, let's do our C6H5OH plus the hydroxide, plus the hydroxide. Um, this is the reaction that's happening now. Since we're at equivalence point, those two are consumed, only um, that conjugate base is left is going to partially react with water. Now something that is really important that I want to drive home, look at what's next to water. It's a base. That means I've got to use KB. We've got to use KB. So you look at what's next to water, um, and this is going to be a base plus water, so I've got to use KB. Common mistake. If you have a base plus water, make sure you use KB, not KA. So to find KB, I was given KA. Just a little reminder, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 equals KA times KB. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 equals 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10 times KB. Just divide both sides by my 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10. And our KB value is KB, I'll put it up here actually, KB equals 7.69 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so you got our KB value. Now we can do our ice table. Okay, so we got I, C, and E. My initial concentration of this weak base is 3.227 times 10 to the minus 2. Woo, I'm feeling good. We've come a long way and you're doing awesome. So again, 
we're at that beautiful equivalence point. These are equal moles, completely reacted. Only thing that's in here is that C6H5O minus is that weak base is partially reacting with the water. And that's what we're going to figure out. What's the uh, pH when that partially reacts with water? Water is a liquid, so that's a dash, not a part of our equilibrium. We have zero of the phenol, zero, zero of the hydroxide, because this is just barely going to react. So we're going to lose an amount of that base, gain some phenol, gain some hydroxide, E, add them both up, and we get um, 3.227 times 10 to minus 2 minus x, 0 plus x is x, 0 plus x is x. Let's go ahead and write our equilibrium expression. So Kb will equal our phenol, times hydroxide divided by that weak base C6H5O minus. Now we can plug everything in. I'm going to actually do it uh, over here. We will have 7.69 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x times x, x squared, divided by 3.227 times 10 to the minus 2 minus x. Now the x, we can count that negligible because there's a factor of 100 difference or greater. So I'm 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus five, that's three zeros difference. I only need two zeros difference. That x is going to be so small that when we subtract it from this concentration, it's as if the concentration doesn't even change. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3.22 times 10 to the minus two, take the square root and x, this is my hydroxide, x will equal 1.575 times 10 to the minus 3. Now remember, that's the concentration of hydroxide. And I want pH. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to find pOH equals the negative log of hydroxide. So this is the negative log of 1.5 times um, Oh, sorry, 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And pOH is going to be 2.8. Now that's pOH. I've had students go all the way through this problem and circle that as their final answer. It's like, oh, you did all the hard work. And there was one tiny step left. That was pOH, but we want pH. So recall, pH plus pOH equals 14. Let's just plug in that 2.8, and we are going to get 11.2. Woo, nice. So our final pH at the equivalence point is 11.2 equals, wow, the pH right there at the equivalence point, 11.2. Awesome, 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 awesome. Now, I wanna come back. At the equivalence point, what are the concentrations of everything? So at equivalence point, here's a concentration of the C6H5O. Remember, that's what's left in here, reacting. And the X is so small, when you subtract it, it's still just going to be 3.22 times 10 to the 7. So I'm going to erase some of this, and we can write it out nice and clean. Okay, here we go. So concentration of the C6H5O minus that is the 3.227 times 10 to the minus two. Okay, the concentration of the phenol, that's X. C, oops, sorry, C6H5OH. And our X, I have to look it up again, was the 1.575 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, the concentration of the hydroxide, same thing. 1.575 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, let's see here, what else have we got? Two more that I want us to find. The concentration of hydronium. What is the hydronium? Well, we can use our Kw again on this. 1 times 10 to the minus 14 equals hydronium times hydroxide. Just plug in that hydroxide, 1.575 times 10 to the minus three. Divide that over, and our hydronium is 6.35 times 10 to the minus 12, which totally fits a pH of 11.2.
Last one, mm. our sodium ion. Because remember, we had the sodium hydroxide. So it's the amount of sodium hydroxide that was delivered is going to be the moles of the sodium hydroxide, which is the same thing as hydroxide, 5.47 times 10 to the minus three, divided by the new total solution is actually this. It's gonna be the same as this. Remember, it was 5.47 times 10 to the minus three divided by 169 mils, that right there. So it's gonna be the same thing. Let me say that again, why? Sodium hydroxide is gonna have the same number of moles Hydroxide, same number of moles of sodium because it's a one to one molar ratio. So you have this many moles of sodium. So to find molarity, you do moles divided by liter. Well, the new volume was the 125 plus the 44, 169 mils. The 125 of the acid, and we added 44 mils of the base. So this many moles divided by 169 is a 3.227 times 10 to the minus 2. And all of these, it's molar. All of those are going to be molar. Whew, you did it. Way to go. I'm going to have you do this problem at least two times. So if this is new to you, I want you to rewrite all of this right here. Start from the beginning. Do it on your own. Um, where you hit a wall, I want you to stop. Come back to the video. Find your spot. Get clarification. Turn it off keep going on your own. You've got this. If you can do this problem, number 23, you can do any titration. So, so proud of you. If you have other questions, go to the uh, Equilibrium Acid Base Playlist. Thanks so much. Bye.